Mm -hmm. And I wrote them down. Sure, you can. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I'm Mitch Robinson. I'm executive director of the Solana Community Economic Development Organization, uh, along with the chamber, along with Mary here at the temple. We're glad to have you all here tonight at our. This is February now. I'm gonna get my month right. February startup program. So uh, let's go around first off and kind of introduce yourself since I started. Let's go over here. Hi, um, Dimitri Zimby. Here in Salina after October. I moved here to Colorado. I've been there for 25 years. I'm originally from Arkansas. So I came back to my southern roots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I love it too. That bad rain for something else up there. <laughs> and plus, I missed out on the snow too. So I got a pretty nasty storm. But a storm, a uh, snowstorm that I was happy to avoid. Maybe that's because I'm here. No, no way. <laughs> um, I think they got a bunch of ice in Arkansas too. And in Arkansas, I was talking about to my mom today. I, she was, she, she said I can send you as much as you need. <laughs> like, yep. um, oh, I just wanted to um, put out that. Uh, so I'm. Uh, my aspiration is to do a metaphysical. Um, gift shop, arts, and uh, things that kind of help you connect with the energies of the earth and stuff like that. Crystals, you love it. Incense, and candles, and all kinds of fun stuff. You know? Yeah. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Josh Tellison. Uh, kind of pretty new to Salina area in July uh, when I came here. We we're looking at Possibly starting up a new venture. I'm Janelle, and I have lived around here almost my whole life. And um, I currently work at Selena Family. And just interested to see what the Charlie Walk the future is about. Josh, okay, where did you uh, come from? Uh, Springfield, Missouri, most recently. Originally from Kansas City and lived in Tulsa for a little while. I'm Mary, you want to go next? Sure, I'm Mary Landis. I'm the director here at the Temple. We're a nonprofit that owns this building uh, and we're repurposing it and have an incubator set up here. So we have co working spaces all throughout the building. Everything from culinary to office spaces to help you get started. Um, we have a theater, we've got large and small, anything you need. Um, okay, so we're also an event center. And you've got several tenants here that have started businesses. Yes, we have we'll 20 startups right here. Um, and we've got space for more. So our spaces are very flexible. We have from small, some people are just running a closet and they convert that into sales space to assemble. Things all the way up to we have a dance studio. Dog training. Dog training. Yeah, there are lots of. They're not just startups; they're sole proprietors. Okay. I'm Steve Harrison. I'm kind of a regular here. I grew up in 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 Solana. I left here in the '90s and went to and the, well, I left here in '85 to go into service. And spent five years on the East Coast and came back here in 90, got been back to K-State, spent two years there, and then spent 25, got a job in Arkansas, spent 25 years in Arkansas, and then came back here and was on my way to Dallas, but my parents were getting older and needed a little more help, so I ended up staying here and uh, just kind of interested in uh, you know, all sorts of uh, business opportunities. And healthy business, small businesses in different ways, how we can. Now, I'm a commander of the VFW and treasurer of AMBUS. So, if anyone wants to be, which AMBUS does disability, help with disability, uh, mobility. A oh, question about that. You had a meeting yesterday, I think I missed that one, right? At the VFW? Uh, no, but the, there was a VA meeting okay. that they had that uh, John, who works at the VA clinic, and he had probably a good eight to ten people there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It was there. It wasn't wasn't 
really run by the VFW, but it was at the VFW in our, in our lounge, and he just was helping them people with paperwork and, and things. So, all right, and he comes every so often, or is it not all? Is it all a regular schedule that he visits, or not? Uh, well, well, John, he works at the VA clinic. Okay. And then okay. he started up, it's usually on Tuesday nights, I think, he has a group of people that kind of see talk with, you know, about different things and looking at maybe doing a group of dealing with some PTSD type things as well. So what time did you start? So I'm trying to think about when he got there, but I think he gets there around six. Okay. I think. You know, he works over the VA clinic, so you can always you stop in and find out, you know. We have a veterans room here, too, yeah. and they meet twice a week for coffee, and we have veterans breakfast once a month, and, um, and we have clinics and different things. So if you're looking for help with yeah. veterans services, yeah. I think Steve and I think we can pick that room. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I might have to get you, uh, where when you guys start that the program with the DPSD, mm -hmm. uh, my neighbor, Kelly Bolte, she does um, like equestrian therapy. Yes. And she's mostly the kids right now, but she's looking to do something with veterans with as well. Yeah, I think I've spoken with her. Now she's out on Wasserman. Okay, is that out? Is that a tap route? Yeah, it's like yeah, she's got she's got it. She's got her already kind of established and she's got a like, one person working with her young lady. Yep, yep. I actually okay. graduated high school with her. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've talked with her. Right. Yeah. I have talked with her and she's uh, want to find out if maybe some veterans that might be interested in going out there and helping okay. and work with some of the, the, the horses and trying to help, you know, give them something to do and kind of relax. Yeah, it is. You guys have already done it. You never know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I would do another introduction, you know, at <coughs> an event or something. So yeah. we'll get a brief event so yeah. get all the connections with the different people. Yeah. She's a great lady. So, um, I'm Jesse. I actually already have my business going, but we're new in Kansas. Um, I have a medical staffing agency. So I know everybody who's like, oh, medical staffing, you guys are screwing up with everyone. That's not us. Um, we're trying to get back to what it's be about. So I just wanted to come and kind of see what Charlie Walker pitch was. Uh, my grandpa actually used to be with Harvard. So, um, <laughs> I grew up with him, so um, I just kind of wanted to see what it was about. We'll find that out a little while. Paul, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Paul Hedlund. I'm uh, a teacher at uh, Kansas Wesleyan in the business department. Okay. Robin Van Atta, I'm the administrative assistant for the economic development organization. You're, you're the one who Keeps a lot of things I going. Which just I push the buttons. So. Uh, push everybody's buttons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to push all, all the time. Um, well, th it's kind of exciting to be able to say the, now I can say it, the second annual, <coughs> uh, I was told, no, you can't call it an annual anything until after you've had it. So now, we, we, uh, last year we had uh, our first uh, attempt to uh, put together the the Charlie Walker Pitch Challenge. Uh, last year we did a series of events kind of leading up to that that week. And uh, we're not gonna do that this year, I don't believe. And uh, the lady that really is behind the scenes, she's kind of the magic person with all the uh, pulling the strings and the running the computer program is Renee. Renee has wears many hats, you just can't see them. Not only is she the interim chamber president, she is still holding her current position as the economic development uh, workforce uh, director for the chamber. She's been, uh, is it three years now? Almost, yeah. Um, um, time um, time. Yeah, it's it's fun. Fun, right? yeah, that's right. <laughs> so she's going to kind of walk us through uh, the process, the application, what we're looking for. Uh, so, Ray, why don't you come up and get started, and uh, we'll, we'll answer questions and go from there. Yeah. So, this is specifically when we held this event last year, 
um, one of the things that we sort of debriefed afterwards um, and talked with some of the participants was actually holding a pitch class um, prior to um, the challenge so that people could kind of get an idea of what so that's what that flyer is. And there's a bunch of different things and resources um, in front of you that I'll kind of walk through to lead up to the Charlie Walker Pitch Challenge. So this event sort of was a culmination of obviously the Salina Community Economic Development Organization and um, what we have over at the Salina Area Chamber of Commerce, which is called Project Open. And Project Open um, has been around for a long time um, and provides a number of different supports and resources for startups, expansions, entrepreneurs, small business owners. Um, we specifically have uh, business classes that we partner with Kansas, uh, Kansas State University Salina with, and those are offered free to the public. Um, we usually do those quarterly. And so that is um, one of the things that you have. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> um, we have our next quarter's um, classes set up for February 7th and 9th. And there is a QR code on there, or you can go to project, projectopenslina.com trainings um, to register for those. Again, those free, open to the public. Um, and those classes are really great. It's two nights, and it's 5.30 to 8.30, I think, each night. So a pretty solid um, amount of time. But what Kathy and Fred and Sue do is kind of take you through the process of creating a business plan. And that's probably one of the most important steps you can take as an entrepreneur is really um, formalizing what your plan is, really getting an idea of all of the details um, and focusing that plan onto paper. Um, because as you start going out in the community and specifically as you're looking for funding, um, that business plan is going to be critical. Um, we do require that class for then the gap loan funding program that we do for Project Open um, because you have to have a business plan to apply. That's a part of the application. Um, so we do require that. Plus, again, we really want um, people sometimes come in and they've got a great business idea or they've got a passion for it, um, but they haven't really thought through some of um, the things and the business just thought process is really helping you think through. So just to let you know, those classes um, next week, the second and the seventh, they're held out at Kansas State University Salina. Um, I'm sorry, the seventh and the ninth. Did I say that right? Um, next week, um, held out at Kansas State Salina. You can get on right now and register again. Those are free. Um, I think registration for is open until that Monday beforehand, actually. So um, encourage you to do that. Um, so on top of the classes and the gap loan funding we're able to do, and the gap loan funding, I won't spend a lot of time on that, but the gap loan funding is essentially when you go to the bank and you say, I need 100K, for instance, to start this business, and the bank says, you know what, we can do 40 um, of that. We usually can come in and look at your application and look at what you're trying to do and try to get you to that minimum 60 in loan funding. It's not grant funding. We do have some small grant funding that we do as well. This is actual loan funding, but it's fairly low interest rate, and it's actually very competitively low interest rate right now. Let's, let's keep going up. Um, I just saw the Fed, um, I think, raised it again today. So um, just helping um, entrepreneurs um, have that access to capital, that is one of the biggest barriers. If you go walk into a bank and the bank says, I can only do 40% of what you need, um, and you don't have anywhere else to go, then you're down in the water as an entrepreneur. So that's what we try to help with. Um, so uh, beyond that, then, um, we had some businessmen in the community who are just interested in giving back. They want to help entrepreneurs and um, specifically wanted to do it in this kind of really fun, <laughs> engaging way. Um, so brought up the idea of doing a pitch challenge, and we kind of all worked together to create what was the first annual um, Charlie Walker Pitch Challenge last year. Um, this is an event that um, as we, we um, have it set up for this year, you essentially um, go to this page. This is Venture Dash. This is the group that we're able to work with through Network Kansas and have access essentially to this technology and this platform. Um, but you can go on and join the competition. Um, essentially, that's just a registration process. You enter an email and your name and maybe your business name in there. Super easy. Um, but then it'll kind of show you and help you um, 
with the two components of the application. The first component of the application is the business plan. I mentioned that before. <laughs> you usually need a business plan to, to kind of move forward. That's one of the things we need in this is a business plan. We are limiting this business plan to 12 pages. Um, so if you have a business plan that's a larger than that, um, I would recommend trying to summarize and condense it a little bit. Most people, it's smaller than, than 12 pages, uh, but we are limiting it to that just for the, the judging purposes. Um, and then we also are asking for a two to three minute elevator pitch. So this real quick video pitch of what your business is, um, as well as who you are and, and why um, you're, you're passionate about your business. Um, just something real fast. Again, that elevator, how would you explain your business if you have 30 seconds to somebody in an elevator sort of situation? Um, so just in that really fast. Those two components will be judged online. So you upload those. Our judges have access to them online as well. Then um, they go through the rubric. And uh, Robin, if you can <coughs> scroll down, I think. Okay, click on this for me. So if you click on the components, there's this little thing over here that says view rubric, and this is within the registration as well. But you can kind of get a sense if you click on that. Um, Which screen to watch? <laughs> so this goes through and shows you the different things: market opportunity, business model, management capability, um, product service offering, and I think those are those are it for that. So it's a very basic, very simple sort of rubric. But as you go through and create your business plan or upload your business plan, kind of making sure that you're hitting on those very specific, because that's what they're going to look at. Um, and I do believe when you go within the competition further, you get a little bit more information on these. Um, but our judges go through and they rate where you're at with market opportunity, business model, management capability. And then all of that gets kind of automatically calculated. So by the end of all of this, depending on how many applications we have in there, we'll have our judges go through and um, judge everybody's business plan, everybody's elevator pitch video. We will get a tally of where all of those weighted scores are. And that top 10 then gets chosen to, to participate in the live pitch. Um, and so that group will be contacted. Everybody will be contacted to let them be know one way or the other. But that group specifically will be contacted to say, all right, you're in, you get to go, you get a pitch in front of the judges. That event, and if you want to go back, Robin, um, that event is going to be on Friday, March 24th at Kansas Wesleyan University. And we will go through and in no certain order have everybody kind of do their pitches for the night. We will have a panel of judges, about four to five judges, who will have laptops in front of them or iPads and who will go through this platform again, all your scores from the business plan and video will already be uploaded on there. And then you will do your pitch. I'm trying to get back there. You're fine. My mouth. <laughs> you will do your pitch um, and then they'll rate your pitch uh, for the night. And um, those with the highest scores, the top five this year, last year we did top three. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so that we've got the, we've got the rubric and we're gonna add them all up. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Uh, you talked the pitch. Is it the same pitch that you did the video on? Or is yeah, it this is very movie? different. So this is that that video, honestly, like two minutes, maybe. I mean, just very fast. This is who I am. This is the business. The pitch at the challenge is a five minute pitch. And there's a rubric for that as well, that you're having to touch on different things. So again, when you go to the bottom and you look at the elevator, pit, those are there, there's different rubrics for each of those. And so you can go in and see, okay, the elevator pitch, I want to make sure I address this. This is what I'm being scored on versus the live pitch, which is what you're being scored on here. Okay, then the second question is, is it the aggregated three scores that determine the winner yep. or is it, but it's not just making the break and then how are you doing that final pitch? It's adding them all up. It is adding so if them you do up. well on one, that's good for you. And now, who's going to know? Are you going to know your raw scores from the first two going into the going into the third, or is all, is, is all that private? That's all private. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't share that. We just let everybody know they're in the top ten. 
and not we don't want them in a weather places and left like I said there's no rhyme or reason to the, the pitch order or lineup then as well. Um, we did do this last year and we will do it again this year is that um, we put everybody in sort of like a green room to start off with and the first pitch comes out and presents and then they get to sit in the audience so you're not sitting and watching everybody pitch um, before you pitch as well. You kind of get segregated. Um, that brings us up. So if you have like a people that are there for you, can they watch for you yes. strictly? No, they can watch the audience, get, can watch everything. Yep. We, we encourage people yes. to bring family, friends, it's exactly. a lot more fun. Yeah, it is a lot more fun when you have a big audience. And so, yeah, your family or friends who are there to see you, they can come and watch all the other pitches and everything. But you, that the actual uh, uh, competitors, I should say, get sort of um, quarantined. Okay, so you have these judges. Now, do these judges work together to score, or is each individual judge? Each individual. And then, so that you have to so say you have 10 people doing this, and you have the first one and the 10th one. And uh, is it when you when you see it, you score it, or do you get a chance to kind of figure out what you think in terms of the best and the worst and how all this is when you see it, you score it. And then, so they go through the rubric and they score based on, on that rubric how that pitch, they thought that pitch did. And they do get to ask questions. There's a short period of time afterwards for questions from the judges. But at that time. But at that time, before that next pitch comes out, they're scoring. How many people do you guys do you have a guesstimate on how many people you think are going to be applying for this or we're not sure about last year? Yeah, we're not sure. We already have um it's not we're still a month out, but I think we have like eight people who've already submitted. So you know we at least <laughs> have eight. Um I anticipate maybe close to 15 to 20. Um, based on last year and kind of the traction that we're getting this year, I think it'll probably kind of steadily grow um, a little bit. So I'm guessing like 15 to 20, but again, this is open to other counties. And so, you know, and this platform will take as many as, as, as apply. So it could get, you yeah. know, places that exactly. Yeah. We really could. So it, I'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens again this year. We've been working with folks with colleges trying yep. to get trying to get students that was something that last year when we put this on we had done it during the time when kwu and kansas state had spring breaks <laughs> and that did not work out for having students at home <laughs> and so we were like okay first thing this year we're sitting down with kathy and we're sitting down with michelle and we're planning this when you know we know students are going to be able to be engaged and involved so that is something that between the two universities um, this is something that um, we do a youth entrepreneurship challenge with USD 305 and that first place winner um, that happens March 1st, they get to automatically compete. So we actually end up having 11 competitors um, total because we let them have that automatic entry for winning the youth entrepreneurship challenge. Um, but that being said, um, we had some kiddos last year from Ellsworth, I think, outside of Ellsworth that competed and they were I want to say like 12, 14, and 16 brothers um, who had um, a business they were doing. And so um, we do encourage um, younger entrepreneurs in that as well. So there's kind of not really a, a, an age, you know, parameters on this. Um, if you have a business and you want to come pitch your business, then we're encouraging that. Um, it is also, like I said, I mentioned Dickinson, Ellsworth, McPherson, Ottawa, and Sullivan County. So kind of surrounding plus us um, that we're opening that up to as well. So reaching out to Southeast Saline and El Saline and some of our other rural um, school districts to get them involved if they'd like to be. So um, yeah, so then that night, everybody who's competing gets up and pitches. Like I said, they kind of go through and then they get to sit in the audience and hopefully breathe and then just end up watching the rest of the pitches. Um, we have kind of this brief intermission where I Kind of go through and, and make sure um, scores are all in and we know kind of immediately who those winners are going to be um it's still um up again just a little bit to the cash prizes so like i said last year we did three places this year they decided they really wanted to kind of spread out <laughs> the wealth a little bit more so we're doing um five um uh, uh places um with the first place being seventy five hundred dollars and then you can see forty five hundred three thousand two thousand and one thousand 
So hopefully that kind of helps um, get people really excited about this too. Um, because uh, you come in at fifth place, you still get that thousand dollar big check. And that's what we do is we hand out the big checks. <laughs> and um, it really last year was really fun. Um, I think everybody really enjoyed it. We learned a lot from it. So there are some things that we've kind of tweaked and changed around to be able to, to do for this event. Um, but that's that's essentially how it works. And then um, we continue to check, kind of check in. There's no sort of like rules about the money, um, but we do um, we like to check in with our entrepreneurs and kind of see how they're doing. Um, last year's first place was Joyful Noise Studios, and they're getting ready to scale up into a larger, um, uh, scale their business up. Uh, second place was Pitt's Creative Corners, which is their downtown, and they're doing um, great stuff and opening a summer camp. And yeah, I love Tia. <laughs> so she's opening a summer camp this um, summer, which is sorely needed. Um, and then third place was um, Breezy Apparel, and I think they're still a couple of years off of their kind of funky um, menswear, is what they were. So. Uh, I want to get them into downtown though because we don't have any men's wearing here. I think they're in um, a department store in Lawrence. Weavers. Thank you. Yes. Oh um, so they're kind of getting into some places, but I'd like to have them actually here yeah. in Salina. So um, yeah, so there's just a lot of really cool stuff happening in Salina, a lot of this sort of activity, a lot of really great ideas, and this is just one way for us to try to support it. Um, do you have to be a resident of Salina County in order to uh, apply? So for our students, yeah. Of course. yeah, we had a gal that um, was from Plainville last year who was a KWU student and somehow managed to kind of figure it out or whatever, but she's um, from Plainville, is here going to school, but isn't necessarily. Um, so yeah, that's, we, we do count that. And we do, um, it's for um, startup businesses as well as um, what we call young businesses, any business that's three years or um, younger in operation. It's good to hear, but to understand the, uh, that it's all three that get judged because, I, you know, just doing my thing on that one night, like, right. they, the line I thought yeah. it should have been, but I don't know what those other two were like, you know, right. it'd be a big difference. Yeah, and we did, after the fact last year, we did then let everybody see their scores and yeah. see where they fell on the thing and kind of provided that feedback to them yeah. so they could kind of see. Um, we have also said if anybody was a winner yeah. last year, they could compete again, but if they did not win a cash prize, then they are welcome to enter and try to compete again this year. So trying to you know, give them the opportunity again um, to do that. Um, and then again, like I mentioned, we are holding this how to pitch your business workshop. Um, so that's gonna be at the end of this month. It's Tuesday, February 28th, again, out at Kansas State Salina. Um, just kind of a short um, workshop, but really kind of helping people understand what they need to include in their pitch as far as the rubric, um, how that might look, trying to do it in five minutes. Um, as well as just some general pointers on um, speaking, public speaking. Um, there's a lot of these people who haven't ever really gone out to public speak before, and just so that sort of projection and articulation and, and those sorts of things, um, just kind of giving them that basic level of that. Um, and I think what we're going to try to do, actually, is let everybody have an opportunity to just giving them a topic, not necessarily their business, because this is a competition after all. But giving them a topic to get up and talk about for a few minutes just so they can try kind of experience um, getting up and, and what that means to do in a very quick amount of time. It can be it can be really daunting. And so we want to kind of try to help leave that a little bit. And again, that was something that was mentioned after last year's so that people were like, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so we want to make sure people, you know, feel a little bit more confident um, about what they're what they're competing. Um, and so I think that's everything. Um, like I said, that you have the QR codes to get to this site. You just go up to join the competition. It'll ask, I think there's judge or there's different things. You'll join as an entrepreneur. I think that's pretty, everybody kind of understands that. And then you're basically just set up and then you can come back, log in and come back to this site anytime you need to in order to get yourself uploaded. Um, and that is open until March 10th. And so at 1159. And so if it's 11 p.m., um, you can still go on and get yourself uploaded. Um, but 
that 11.59 mark, it'll, it'll shut down on you. So, um, and then yeah, very swiftly after that. So we have judges, like I said, who'll be judging online. My goal is to get a large number of judges so that everybody's business plan and video gets looked at at least twice um, or by two different judges. And that the same judge isn't judging your business plan and your video that we're kind of mixing everything up that way too. So we have this kind of large cross section of, of different judges um, and hopefully being you know, a little more um, subjective about it. So that's, um, or objective about it, I'm sorry. Um, and so once all of that happens and, and we're going to probably give that about a week for our judges to be able to go in and tabulate those scores in um, and then I would say, let's see, March 10th, is that a Friday as well? So I think we had said, actually, that, that's, I, I take that back, that's what, right, March 10th is a Friday, mm -hmm. right? Yep. We're going to get judged that weekend so that we can announce on Monday. I forget that this is, I get confused between youth, youth entrepreneurship and this. So we'll get that judged over the weekend and then let people know by Monday the 12th then. Um, what um, if they're participating for the, the 24th? So then hopefully we can really get <laughs> get um, uh, prepared then for that event. So, any other questions? People want a prop. They have yeah. things on stage with them. Uh, a couple of couples, I think, at least. I think two maybe had their kids. Had their kids, and yeah. Kids had a role in the presentation, which is really cute. Yeah, and we do have, we will have audio visual. So if you have a slide deck you're wanting to use, we'll be able to do that. If you have you know, something you're wanting to show, you know, we should be able to, to accommodate that. Definitely reach out if you have any questions. Um, but typically, after we kind of announce and get in touch with our um, folks that are competing, then I try to you know, stay in, in good contact with and let them know who to send stuff to and what they need and, and kind of try to get everybody prepared for what that night is going to kind of look like and feel like and, and all that good stuff. Um, and again, we're at Kansas Wesleyan University this year at Peter Science Hall. Um, so I believe, is that like a lecture? So it's kind of, yeah, that's what I thought. So it'll be kind of a bowl. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be, um, like I said, it was really a lot of fun last year. I'm looking forward to it this year um, again. And um, the more people, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be doing our part to try to get the general public out as well. I mean, a lot of people brought their family and friends, but a lot of just, you know, Joe's in the community came out to, to watch as well um, to support this. And so um, when you have that crowd, there's just a good energy there too. So. It's called the Charlie Walker thing. Is Blue Beacon involved? They are in the well. I should say, the Walker family is involved. Not Blue Beacon. No. Yeah, the Walker family is sort of kind of involved sure. in, in doing this stuff. Bennington Bank and JRI uh, are two sponsors that provided all the help. So oh, once we got that, we just have to go. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. the, the Walker family is involved in that sense that um, they've kind of given their blessing for us to utilize Charlie's name and likeness, as well as Trace was there last year as a judge. I'm not sure um, who will be, if he'll be, or why, or you know, but they're involved in that way as well. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? I do encourage you, if you're interested in competing, to definitely get on, look through the rubrics. Um, that's just super helpful in trying to kind of you know, focus on what you, the information you need to be getting across in your business plan, in your elevator pitch, and then finally in that final pitch. Um, because that is what the judges will have in front of them when you're reading your business plan or watching the elevator pitch or watching the live pitch. And they'll go, okay, did that have that piece? Did that? And so that's something I definitely encourage. Um, and then, of course, reach out if you have any questions. We're happy to help. If you're really serious about the money, um, that click in the upper right hand corner where it shows how they're going to evaluate you, they, you'll have wonderful ideas, and I've seen them wander all over everywhere. But they're going to go to 
those judges are going to go to that upper corner and they're going to see exactly what you see. And so as you put your various piece of pitch or whatever it is together, make certain you address specifically those competencies so that when they go through that, you go, oh, they did this and they did this and they did that. That's the biggest mistake I see, not just kids either. Right. I see adults, they're not used to this kind of evaluation. Right. But that rubric is a big, big deal. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I definitely try to push it. We'll be talking about it in the pitch class. We'll be talking about right. it. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that I just, like you, you said, um, you can have, feel like you just have a great presentation, but if you haven't covered everything that they're going to be looking at and evaluating you on, then they're going to be like, oh, well, they didn't, you know, address this, they didn't address this, and you're going to end up playing really well. Um, and it could be a great presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, a great idea. idea. Exactly. And all that stuff. Right. If you don't communicate the way those judges are going to look at it, because they have to compare each, yeah. each business. Yeah. And that's exactly right. And if you what do it, in, I was going to say, if you even do it in that logical order so that they're just going through and going, oh, yep, I got that, got that, got that. It's, it's definitely going to help you. Yep. So. Well, then, as a startup business, if you haven't gone through these steps to get a business plan, let's have an idea of, a, of an elevator pitch for each other. These are just great exercises in general to have yes. come away now with all of those, you know. Yeah. Information for yourself. Exactly. And, and like I said, I mean, um, Melissa has said this several times, um, the winner from last year, that it was a great process for them to have to go through this because they had to really evaluate and look at things. And so they just felt like it was just really good for their business. Um, they were one of those young businesses that came in, had been in operation for a while, um, but it was really good for them to do that evaluation piece and really take a look at some of this stuff. And so um, definitely, if you're a startup, like I said, just going through the process creating a business plan is an important first step that's going to take you through uh, you know, not only a, a, a challenge or, or a competition, but when you are looking at investors and talking to banks and applying for funding, um, that's like, everybody's going to want to see that business plan and those financial projections. And so um, if you've not done that yet, like I said, we've got the Project Open classes that do that. The other resource I highly recommend if you're not able to do Project Open is Small Business Development Center. Got a lot of stuff online, templates, and different things you can utilize. And then Susan Kanka, who's kind of our, our representative for this area, is really, really good at sitting down with entrepreneurs. She's not going to do the work for you, but she's going to help guide you through it. So, and, and reevaluating, you know, if you've been in the same business for a little while, reevaluating where you are and where you want to go because adjusting, because you got through one, but you, you want to expand it, like mm -hmm. you want to go into a different area. And that's something new. Mm -hmm. You've been in business, but this is something new that you're looking at. So take what you got and see what you need to, to do to go after that. One. I just uh, asked about the thing yesterday, yeah. matter of fact, and I go, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. I'm just winging it. Yeah. You know, I need to, you know, kind of expand this further because it's just blowing up. And I'm like, well, do you have a business plan? And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're going to start there. <laughs> um, and and it, it, is, it is super helpful, I think, um, in the end. It helps people really tighten their focus and understand the market. And there's just a lot of things that when you think, oh, I'm going to, you know, do this business, um, that there's details there that can really help you be successful if you think them through and do the research and, and, and all of that. So they can validate your ideas too. Yeah. When you do the research, you find out well, that's not really feasible. That's not an area I can go into. Absolutely this right. is another area that I see that I need to. Mm -hmm. You can find that other step. Beer off is something else that may be more appropriate if you find yeah. out the system has a growth Yep. Yeah. That's all. All good points. Tour the Society of oh, Retired yeah. Executives. That's a good one. Is another another good source there. They are based. There's a branch in Wichita. If they come up this way to service, if you've got a, a certain type project, they can, they can uh, go through their membership and find somebody that you know 
started pizza place or whatever it was. Uh, they've got a lot of resources of uh, retired people, and some of them are still active as well. It's not all retired people. So. Yeah, that's a great resource. They're nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> So if I'm if I'm thinking of a presentation from last year upstairs on the stage okay. and the size of props and mm -hmm. movements that people did between, so that room has a lot smaller stage, stage. area, right? Yeah. And then it's it's the doors up at the bottom. I so think like so we'll prop because I think that's mm -hmm. where and we'll like I said we will go take a look and mm -hmm. kind of get all that information out for everybody. But this is how big your stage is. This is where the, what the auto visuals are. This is where you'll so everybody is totally prepared. And we had even talked about we might be able to do this opening it up like on Thursday night or some night that week to where people can come in and actually just feel you know kind of understand and do kind of like a not necessarily a run through. Um, but see the space, get an idea, be up on the stage, understand what the flow is going to be. Just to sort of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just to kind of help with, okay, what am I walking into? But I do believe there are doors because I think that's what Michelle said is that, that one of those rooms would be off and then you can come in from that door. So, but don't quote me on that just yet. But we will make sure, like I said, if we if we can't get you in there beforehand, which I don't think. That we we clearly identify what to expect. Usually, they're like fifteen minute walks for everybody to pick a time. Yeah, I mean, it's possibly, possibly possibly we can try to make that work. I haven't talked to Michelle about our access to that space, but that is something that we would then want to be able to do. So it's just good. logistics. We'll, we'll figure something out to hopefully get everybody in there if they want to if they want to come through the space. And are you talking about for the preview or for the yeah? when you go for the event, like the last people that are actually going to the on stage. You know, yeah, that, that's my job. I'm kind of the shuffler, so we'll get people. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you're done, you're off the stage, and the next one, we're kind of. You know, well, I mean, like beforehand, like she's okay. talking with going and just. Just having a 15 minute activity. Yeah. Yeah, I have like a little, you mm -hmm. know, 10, 15 minutes where this is your time. If you want to run through and do it, you can practice. Nobody else will be in there, right. so you have that mm -hmm. no exposure to everybody else. Kind of. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. idea. <laughs> so if, if we're able to kind of set something like that, like on Thursday night or you know something like that, um, we definitely, like I said, would like to be able to kind of open it up. So, but that's a great idea, scheduling everybody and seeing if we can. Who wants to? Um, some people are. Going to be interested for whatever reason, but if you want to, we'll let you. We'll let you come do that. So we'll definitely be communicating that um, because that definitely is the feedback we got last year. Is that you know it was just really daunting, not really knowing what to expect and what was you know and and with, like I said, we tried to lay out expectations as, as much as possible, and everybody knew that they weren't going to be you know they knew some of that, but until you're really there and you really see and you understand you know how things are going to operate it can be very anxiety producing i understand looking out, looking out the crowd and see your mom yeah. sitting there you know it's, exactly yeah, and exactly and, you know, five I'm just, minutes and go and yeah it's, i'm just really pleased i think everybody one of the high school we had two high schoolers mm -hmm. three three yeah three and one of them froze for just a moment mm -hmm. and then she got a little loose from my mom. And she did, yeah, that was good. And she ended up doing fine. And then, yeah, and then yeah. Then she went, she took yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, and, and the wonderful thing was afterwards, we came up to everybody and talked to them and they were very happy. They did it well. I'm pretty sure Trace, because he asked me for everybody's contact information, and I'm pretty sure he followed up with every single person. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah. 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 Like I said, this this group um, of, of folks that are kind of helping the financial and, and sort of backing of this is just a really great group of people who just want to see people succeed. And so that's that's cool. All right. I don't know if I can see everybody.
<laughs> if you have any questions, I can be reached to the chamber. I don't think I have any my cards or anything. Um, my email on there. But um, yeah, it might be really tiny there. If you call the chamber office, if you look up um, on the chamber website, you can get my email, call the office. I'm happy to answer questions. I know Robin and Mitch can answer some questions too. Um, but we want we want everybody to feel you know comfortable with, with this and feel confident in it. So just let us know if you if you're unsure of anything. So that's all I got. And then there's some more 